Hey everybody, welcome back to this series where I go through various RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one I'm going to be going through three different adventures for the Shadow Dark RPG. First is The Crow's Cage by Runehammer Games. The second is Kazad Moor, um, which is a really interesting dungeon crawl that I heard some people talk about online and decided to give it a check out myself. Um, and then the third is The Pits of Brund, which is sort of a compilation of a series of adventures, dungeons I guess, into one big adventure. Uh, really one big dungeon crawl. They're all connected. Um, I'll st say right now, these aren't my favorite adventures uh, for different reasons. Uh, I think they're all really well done in their own way, and they're going to each appeal to different styles of play and different tables, um, the different sensibilities of different DMs and players. Um, but for one reason or another, I don't think I will ever run these adventures, uh, at least not as presented. Uh, I might take some bits or adapt them, but um, but I just don't feel like they fit really what I what I like at the table. Now I, I shouldn't say that necessarily all three. One of them, the second Kazad more, I think is actually a really good dungeon, and I, and I could run that. I might run that, but I'll talk about that more when I get to it and why I why it's not my favorite. Um, let's start with the Crow's Cage, which is a Shadow Dark adventure by Runehammer Games. So if you know Runehammer, you're going to know uh, already kind of what this is about, or what this is like, or what's going to go on here. Um, it's very, very narrative heavy. So there's there's a, uh, a series of events that are going to happen, or rather there are events that will happen in various places, and there's sort of like a, you know, you're going you're gonna to deal with this sort of encounter here, and it's going to have this sort of element to it. Um, rather than keying particular, you know, like, well, you'll see more as I go through. Um, it's much more about, you know, developing a really cool narrative scene and a really cool th theme and tone and, and event rather than being super, super open for players to kind of tackle however they want. There's their player choice, don't get me wrong, but it's not like, here's a region, go and investigate. It's like, no, here is a place, and here are, here are some places, and here's what's happening there. And when you go here, this is what happens. And when you go there, this is what you see. And these are the choices you can make. And when you go here, here's what you can see. And so it's very, like, you know, point crawl, but, like, narrative point crawl, right? You're here in the narrative, and then you're going to go over here in the narrative, and it's going to be this branching choice, and are you going to do that or this? That's sort of how I think Runehammer, um, you know, um, Drunkards and Dragons beforehand, Runehammer Games. That's sort of how Brandish Gilhelm <laughs> approaches uh, design, at least as far as I can tell. And so this is an interesting product because it's a little bit combination of ICRPG in terms of just the way that it approaches things um, with the Shadow Dark rule set. So if that sounds like an interesting combination, then you might really, really like this. Um, so you have a brief overview of what's going on and the heroes, and then everything else comes up for the players. You have a bit of a hex crawl. It's very simple. Um, you, you're, you're probably not going to spend a lot of time doing the hex crawl stuff. Um, but it has just says, you know, if you're going to do it, use the Shadow Dark tables. Um, now, one thing that this game suggests that I think probably 98% of the people who play this are going to ignore is that the whole adventure should take place in real time over days. So what that means is you have 14 days in real life and in game to solve the problem. Like, I don't know, man. That I don't know who's going to do that. I mean, maybe there are some people who do, who will do it, and they will, um, they will love it. But I just don't, I just don't see how that's, uh, how that's going to work. I don't think that works. Anyway, it's a minor point because you could easily ignore it. But it's just what he recommends, and I don't know exactly why you do that. You know, I know that there are real time elements in Shadow Dark, uh, but I think this is the kind of viewing that as a meta timer, like we're going to look at real life that way, um, it doesn't really seem to me to work in a narrative game. Uh, I know the players are like supposed to have been marching for the in-between period of time between town to town, but like, I don't know, it just doesn't, doesn't work for me. Um, here is this, the hook and the, the people involved, some of the NPCs in the town. And then there's sort of an encounter that happens when you're in town, the trolls attack and you get this first introduction to the villain, which is the Green Crow. It's a really cool encounter, um, and you get a lot of advice about how to uh, how to fight it and what's going to happen. Um, and then uh, there are some, again, some set encounters that can occur after that. Uh, a certain time, uh, this little girl goes missing, and you have to try to find her. 
and then you can go, you can either follow her or, or track the trolls back to their barrow um, and go fight the trolls and to try to destroy them and their, their mud god, which is kind of a cool idea. Um, and then there's Memnon's Maze, which has sort of a key item if you want to resolve, if you want to get the good ending, quote unquote, of the adventure. Um, and it's kind of what's really going on behind everything. Um, and then you have the uh, little girl Ipsy and what can happen to her. And then you have the green crow and the curse involved and how to deal with it. And uh, you can either just fight it out or maybe try to solve it in a better way. Um, then there's a, an encounter with the green crow and uh, the fight happening there. And then after you defeat the uh, the green crow, uh, you get this sort of last crazy scene where there's you know rocks falling and fissures breaking open and everything is going crazy. You try to escape it. And then at the end, you have the conclusion. It's a very short PDF, only 14 pages. Also, 12 pages are all said and done with the front and back covers. Um, 12 pages, 14 with the front and back covers, I should say. <laughs> um, and then you have this uh, just note on style. You can make it a little less tragic if you want, because there's, again, a sad story going on. You can make it more straightforward. And then what happens with the return and what's next. Now, one of the cool things is here is that uh, there's a playlist on Spotify that goes along with this particular adventure. So you can you can go listen to that if you want while you're playing, which is kind of cool. Um, so really short, interesting narrative adventure. Um, if you know Runehammer games, if you know ICRPG, then you kind of know again what you're getting into. And so if that appeals to you, if that style of, of game appeals to you, then this is right up your, and, and you like Shadow Dark, then this will be right up your alley. Because um, it's a, I think it's a great blending of the two. I, I'm not so keen on that style of play anymore. I, I don't. I used to really like that uh, much more than I do now. I think I'm. It's kind of you know off of it a bit um, in terms of. I, I prefer a big open sandbox with a lot happening and the players getting to pick and choose where they go rather than being like here is a story we're going to play through with a narrative that you're going to follow from beginning to end. Now the second of these adventures I wanted to cover is Kazad Moor. Um, this one is a low level adventure. It's a dungeon crawl. A good old dwarven forge that uh you know, forge mine city combination fortress that's fallen and has been cursed and there's undead and uh creatures running roaming around i think in terms of an actual dungeon crawl it's a low level once level one it's a great um dungeon it's a great dungeon there's a lot of good stuff going on here cool encounters cool treasure uh, really cool monsters and great NPCs. My only problem with this, and it, for me it's a significant problem because I, I, I'm really bothered by stuff like this, is just the, the presentation. I don't like these colors. That's it. That's really it. That's all I would say. There's a print-friendly version, which is black and white, and I, I'll just run that. But the problem with that is a lot of the information is divided by color, and you don't get that as easily in the print-friendly version because there's no color, it's black and white. So I, I wish, I don't know, I think this is great information. It's a great adventure. I would probably transfer it into a, into just a regular, you know, word document for myself because honestly, and this is it's probably it will it is totally irrational. It's just this particular presentation bothers me a little bit. I don't like the colors, um, and uh, I'm not a big fan of that sort of punk uh, vibe, and that's what we get kind of here. The art punk, you know. It reminiscent it doesn't like Morkdor, which I'm not a big fan of. There's AI art throughout, which doesn't bother me so much, but it does bother some people quite a bit. Um, but, you know, it's better than having no art, right? I mean, that's what I always say to people who say they don't like it. It's better than having none, because it gives you a sense of what you're looking at at the very least. Um, so AI art and that presentation will put some people off of this product. Um, yeah, see, there's, I, don't, I don't like the yellow and the pink and the black and sort of brown. It just doesn't, it doesn't, I don't like it. But anyway, leaving that aside, I think that the rest of it is really, really good. And the uh, random encounter tables are fun. The uh, I like how it's broken up into random encounters and uh, omens. So you can have omens. And I like that where you have sort of an, uh, you know, a sign of what's to come rather than actually just having to uh, fight every time. Here is the stat blocks for the creatures that you find, the new creatures that you find in this particular adventure, or at least the ones that are referenced in the random encounter tables. One of the great things about the design of this is how everything is, uh, everything except maps is on the page. And I wish there were more maps on pages. Um, here's another thing I like too, is in the map you get um, like drawings near the places where you can find that thing sometimes, not every time, but you know, like there will be a, uh, like uh, Broomthilla is over there, right? And that's where she's drawn on the map and that sort of thing. There's a key up there and it's drawn on the map. I like that. 
at a glance you can get a kind of sense of where certain important things are in the dungeon. Now, it doesn't happen for every room. It's not there for every room. Um, but you do see it for enough of them that it's kind of a helpful tool. And I, this is what I mean by that style. I'm not a big fan of this art style, this sort of punk graphic, really like, you know, rebel <laughs> design. Um, uh, it, it's just not my favorite. But uh, again, some people are going to love it. I think that's one of the things you'll see with this is that because it's distinctive, uh, people are going to really like it or really dislike it. You know, I'm always a fan of things being distinctive. <laughs> it's cool. Um, because, it, it, you know, you, you pick a lane and you go with it, and that's good. I like that. Um, so, I know, props to them for, to, to, for putting this together and for picking a lane and going with it. Um, but again, the actual design of the dungeon is great. There's a lot of stuff to do. There are cool encounters to have. There's a lot of non-combat encounters. Now, Shadow Dark is obviously a dungeon-crawling game, but, but a large portion of dungeon-crawling is being clever about approaching your encounters. How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it without dying? And can I do it without fighting? Because it's a deadly game. It's a or it's a pretty deadly game. Not as deadly as others, but it's a pretty deadly game. And um, and some of these fights are really hard. So how do I get the treasure without fighting? And the game gives you this dungeon gives you opportunities and uh, ways of approaching things without simply okay I gotta go to the next room and fight the creatures there. I gotta go to the room beyond that and fight the creatures there. So in that respect, it's a great dungeon. Now it's not I would say as creative as it's not as weird or a, and as creative as a lot of, like, say, the Gavin Norman adventures for OSE, um, where I think there's a lot more crazy, wacky things going on there that are more whimsical. And there's a lot more um, tools to, to have kind of a weird experience. Uh, but there is, there's enough of it in here. And it's a big dungeon. I mean, it's actually quite large. So there's enough of it in here that makes it... Um, Interesting. You're going to be interested. Your players are going to be interested as they go through. It's never going to get boring. And that's, you know, as far as I can tell, that's a, that's a solid, good uh, mark, <laughs> right? Um, uh, you get, again, really, really interesting encounters in places with, with cool magic items. And that's one thing that's going on through. There are some really interesting magic items that you can find, particularly guns and stuff like that, um, which I think is cool. I like guns uh, in old games. You have a, a hag who has some things that she wants. You have an old, dead, dwarven king. Um, you've got ghosts throughout. You've got these things called eyelings, which are uh, squat, sawtoothed humanoids with one red eye. And they're kind of a big faction throughout that you can run into. They have lairs, and they're not all just simply evil. Like Corvin, the one who, who leads them, what he wants is art. So evidently, I mean, it makes sense. They're big eyes. <laughs> they would want to look at beautiful things. But that gives you a way of interacting with them in an interesting way, right? Instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to kill all of these creatures. Like, okay, if we can find art pieces, maybe we can get them on our side. We can trade. We can do stuff like that with them. Um, and that will help us in various other places. Um, one of the other things I like about this dungeon is that it's very clearly big. Very often online you'll find like dwarven ruins, right, or dwarven cities. <laughs> it's like 15 rooms, and the biggest is like 50 by 50 with like a 50-foot ceiling. And you're like, this is not a dwarven city. This is a dwarven house, right? <laughs> um, this is very clearly meant to be big. And so you get a sense of a lot of space often. And, uh, and, and some rooms are clearly bigger than they're described, or rather they're bigger than what's interesting in them. So there's a few points that you're going to be looking at and you're going to be describing and probably spending time with, but it's implied, or maybe even you could describe the players moving through a whole bunch of, you know, ruins or empty spaces or, or you know, tunnels or halls or things like the streets where um, it's very clearly, you know, a bit more like the Mines of Moria, right, from the Lord of the Rings, where there's a, a few places that are focused on, Tolkien focuses on, you know, like the, the Watcher in the Water and the, uh, you know, the Riddle at the Gate and then the path with three choices that Gandalf has to choose which way to go and you know the, the the tomb of Balin and so there's particular places that are focused on but they're passing through these large areas that are kind of just referenced in passing uh, you get a, a little bit of that here which I like I think it makes a, a grander sense of the word dungeon um, you've got a great uh, 
creature here, which is a stone golem that's really tired of being here. <laughs> He's just, he wants to be, he wants to stand down. And one of the things that it says here is that he is willing to believe any lie to order to finally deactivate. <laughs> He's just so tired of it. Uh, it's great. Uh, but but he, he has to deactivate if the rightful heirs return. So you'd have to somehow convince him of that, learn that he wants that, and then convince him of that, at least in a vaguely believable lie. Now, a couple things in here. One of them is that on the random encounter table, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's a, uh, one of the entries is a hundred living corpses, a hundred zombies. And this encounter in the living caverns, which is a huge chamber with lots of parks and streets and, and uh, uh, doorways and things like that, there are 300 of them. I mean, that's really deadly, and there's a note here about how, you, how you'd handle that. I think that's cool. Get a sense of, like, this really big horde that you're obviously not going to fight straight up, or if you're going to, you're going to just probably die. But there are probably ways of tricking in and dealing with it. You have to be clever and think about it. I like that. It changes the idea here. And then finally, you have the, the, the last bit of the dungeon, which is the Tablet of the Evil Eye, which is causing all this trouble with the undead and the curse and the eyes things and all that. Um, and the things that it can summon. One of them, or you could, one of the things you can find here is a Dwarven Powder Bomb, which is great. Uh, I like that idea of explosions. <laughs> I'm a simple man. All right, and that's what you get with this adventure. So it's only, it's a pretty short PDF. It's only 20, the, the adventure itself is only about 20 pages. So, Khazad Moore, um, solid dungeon, really good dungeon, actually, I should say. Uh, really, really good dungeon. I, I highly recommend this one, especially if you're more into that sort of uh, punk vibe, which some of the art and the coloring kind of gives me. All right, the last uh, thing I wanted to cover here, oops, this is not the right start of the document, is the Pits of Brund, um, which is a, a sort of a longer adventure. It's for levels one through six, so it's actually quite big. And uh, it's a PDF is 72 pages. Um, now, this one is an interesting set of adventures because, um, well, as you'll see as I get into it, there's a lot of great stuff, so there's a lot of interesting art. I really like a lot of this art. Um, and this is by Menagerie Press, and it's designed for old school, uh, I'm sorry, for, for Shadow Dark. Um, now, one of the things that I find to be a little not as great about this dungeon about this set of dungeons, is that a lot of it is pretty simple. You're dealing with rooms full of monsters that you fight, you get treasure, and then you move on to the next room full of monsters that you fight and get some treasure. Um, there are a lot of very straightforward encounters where you run into the room and you fight. Now, uh, for, for you know Shadow Dark, there are reaction tables and that's that's good but one of my problems is that in the description of a lot of the major npcs and a lot of the major creatures it explicitly says that they immediately attack like over and over and over they immediately attack and and there's a lot of so i'll go through like the dramatis personae in a minute here i'll get back to that what you have is, a, is, again, a series of locations. You have the Tomb of the Hunters, the Opaline Tower, the Caves of Brune, the Deeper Caves of Brune, the Temple of Bloat, and For Shoal. Um, the maps of these locations are done by Dyson Logos. They're keyed here and they're filled out, which is great. Uh, it's awesome. Um, so you're, you're definitely going to kind of proceed through these dungeons bit by bit. And uh, that's another one of my, I'm not sure if criticisms is the right word, but... Um, Curio uh, curiosities, or, or something that I'm curious about is how you would do something like downtime or retreating to town with a lot of these locations, because it's very clearly difficult to get out of. It's difficult to get into, and it's very difficult to get out of. You're days away from civilization in some cases. Which means that I think for Shadow Dark, which has a lot of emphasis on downtime, um, and on, you know, like, using the wealth that you get, bringing it back to... Like, I don't think you get experience when you find the thing. Maybe you do. I always thought it's you get experience when you bring it back safely to town. And that's when you level up too. Uh, but you could level up, I guess, if you wanted to in dungeon by gathering this stuff. Uh, but is it simply enough to pick it up? I, th I thought you had to return it to civilization in order to get the experience for it. And if that's the case, then I think there's going to be some tricky bits in here of where you're going to be like, how do we get back to town to level up or to rest up? Um, because sometimes these are, you know, you're like walking for days 
or for at least miles underground and stuff like that. But, you know, again, I, I think there'd be ways around that. Um, now, the Dramatis Personae is good. I'm glad that they put it right at the beginning. You get some wizards, you get a white, you get a, a, a Grimlock Etten, a great Autiug. Uh There's a priest, an Aboleth, and a Defiler, which is a sort of a mage. Um, but again, as I was saying before, one of my problems is that with almost all of these named creatures, it says when it's described in the book, it immediately attacks. <laughs> it's like, okay, um, one of my, one of the things that makes Shadow Dark interesting is like, okay, we have to find a way to fight this or to get around this without fighting or to survive a very difficult encounter by being clever. This definitely assumes you're going to fight everything you come across. With, with one exception that I could see, uh, and then there's a couple NPCs that you can run into, but they're, um, but with one exception, uh, the Grimlock Etten, it says that if the players don't immediately attack him and they look competent, then he might uh, negotiate with them. Other than Scree, that's it. I'm not sure, are two-headed, are, are, are Ettens two beings or one? I guess I don't know about that. One name in this, right? Scree. But I don't know. Anyway, uh, Tomb of the Hunters. So you get this level one adventure here. Very simple. Now, one of the things that I was a little disappointed in when I first opened this up was how straightforward this first dungeon is. It's obviously just the first dungeon and it gets more complex as you go, but there are rats and ghouls and there's a trap and one NPC that's hiding here. Uh, a, uh, a hiding former dungeon crawler, basically. Um, and uh, that's, that's it. It's very simple. Like, I don't know, I think rolling on the random tables in the Shadow Dark book would maybe result in a more interesting dungeon. And, and that's something that I could do. I could take a Dyson Logos map, roll on the random tables, and create a more interesting low-level dungeon than the Tomb of the Hunters as it's presented here. Which is a little disappointing. Um, and especially for a document that costs, you know, it's not exorbitantly expensive, but you're talking about, you know, you're buying this PDF, uh, you get sort of pre-made maps, you get a bunch of combat encounters. I think, you know, there's a lot of description here, and obviously the writing would have taken time, and I don't want to take away from that, but I just think that this could have used another draft of, like, whimsy, right? Like, okay, I've, I've done all of the main basic stuff, now I'm going to go back through it, I'm going to, I'm going to make it more creative. I'm going to make it more memorable, make it more interesting. Now again, that's not everybody wants that, I, I think. Some people are happy with a straightforward kill kobolds, kill rats, kill ghouls, um, get treasure. That's totally, you know, that's some people's preference. And I think for those sorts of tables, and, and someone using Shadow Dark as sort of a combat dungeon crawler, where the primary way is, you know, kill your, kill your way through the monsters, then this is a definite um, go-to. This and the, the adventures that follow from it. Um, another thing that I think is a little interesting, and I, I would have probably not done, is that there isn't really a reason for all of these, all of these dungeons to connect. Like the Tomb of the Hunters doesn't really have any reason to connect to the next one, but there's a, like a teleporter that lets you teleport um, from this one to the next one. And I guess I don't really see why you need to do that. You could just make the, could have made this like, you know, put a little bit of a hex crawl in and said here are relatively where they are in relation to each other, or, or maybe not even do that, just just do what he does here, which is say um, how far it is from civilization. That's all he kind of needed to do, I think. Um, and I, I think that would have been maybe preferable than to say, and they're all connected through this kind of teleportation set. And I don't really see the need for that. Um, now, what, let, what it lets you do is it lets you you know, say this is one big dungeon. You kind of just run through it. You don't have to go back to town, but that's part of my problem is why why wouldn't you want to go back to town? Um, now, the upper levels of the Opaline Tower, he says, are safe and could be a base for crawlers. So that's that's good. You have a, a maybe a home base here. You could, uh, and there's a bunch of rations already set there, 20 days worth of rations. So, okay, there's a bit of a home base at the top of the dungeon. You can kind of go down. Um, and there are ways, interestingly enough, at least halfway through the dungeon, there is a teleporter that lets you get back here. I let you get back to different places with teleportation rooms. Um, so 
there is a bit of a fast travel system built in, which is cool. Uh, but you're still days away from civilization, so I would imagine that would be a um, that would be a process to return. So really, this is a kind of a, a tricky a tricky dungeon to get out of once you've started. Um, so you go down here. Now there's a, a trap in in room nine, which I I don't yeah I guess I, I guess it makes sense in one sense. There's a checkerboard tile and. The white tiles are celestial and it says love, and the black tiles are diabolic and say power. And if you step on the white ones, it's the trap. So it's like a reverse psychology trap, I guess. I, I, I really don't think those are those are good. In fact, I think they're the opposite of good. I think they are they are designed to to make the DM feel good at the expense of the player's fun. And I don't like those. So I actually actively dislike this trap, but but, but that's it's a very uh, it's just one, <laughs> and the rest of the traps that I read through don't seem to have this this sort of mindset behind them. There are goblin tombs down here, um, and then there are two apprentices who are fighting. No, there's a there's a lizard mount you can you can get, and then there are two apprentices, two apprentice wizards who are trying to get a book down here. Um, and again, this is what uh, one of the things I was. Uh, Talking about earlier, it says they are arguing over the tomb, the tome of the clenched teeth. If not interrupted, they attack each other. Assume only one wizard survives with four hit points. Otherwise, the apprentices attack the crawlers, seeking to defend their stolen book. Okay, why, why not say they each appeal to the uh, the party to help them fight the other? This could have been a really interesting encounter, right? With like two relatively perhaps understandable figures who are each like, hey we are going to fight uh, and maybe make them a little bit more powerful than apprentice magicians, so that way either of them could be a bit of a, a danger to the whole party. But if the other one is helping, then they're definitely not as much of a threat and uh, and make it more of an interesting encounter, right? Um, so, I don't know. I think it just it could have been more interesting, and I feel like that's just true for a lot of this dungeon, is that it's totally solid as a combat dungeon crawler, but it's just not doesn't have that extra level of interest that 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 will would make me want to run it. Like a lot of this stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, I I think I I could make a dungeon like this fairly fairly easily, um, especially with those random encounter tables that we get in um, that we get in. Uh, Shadow Dark. Now, the random encounters here, one of them is a group of explorers. That's cool. You could make it a rival adventuring party. I will always like that. Um, and and you, if time does not allow for a rival adventuring party, it says replace them with cultists, which I think just means you straight up fight them. Um, but again, that, that goes to show you what the kind of the mentality is here. It's going to be fight, fight, fight. Um, and if there's time, then have some more interesting role playing. Uh, okay. You know, <laughs> fair enough. It just goes. It's a. It, it, I think it goes to show a different style of game than a, than what I'm looking for. You get some interesting things down here. You get the deep ones, which are where you start to fight some creatures there, and then uh, you're probably fighting all of them because they they come to fight, which is again totally good. More of these stuff. You know, you got ropers. You get reptilian tombs, and you get this is the reptilian tombs, and the glyphs here is how um, they're sort of a. Uh, the, the, I guess the reptilians are the ones that have been developing sort of teleport circles throughout. Uh, because you can find them in various places and they'll take you to the surface or, or elsewhere. You can you can tune them to each other. Here's another one, like the small earth elemental, for example. Um, there is a, a seam of pearly opal that runs up the back of the wall. You can try to retrieve some of the precious stone. After six attempts, the seam collapses inward in a gritty cascade, releasing an angry earth elemental. Earth elemental. The angry elemental is determined to protect its friend and opal seal and attacks creatures atop the cliff. It does not pursue if creatures flee, but remains vigilant for years. Um, now, it has a friend, right? <laughs> and so it tends to think of the Opal Seal as friend. You could have made it an interesting NPC to encounter. Maybe it's willing to let you have some of the Opal in exchange for X, or it needs, it has a relationship with this other thing that it's fighting and it, it needs help, or maybe it is lonely. Or you, you get the idea, right? You could, I think you could just make all of these things slightly more interesting um, with a little bit more... A little bit more attention, a little bit more work. I'm again. I, I'm sure this took a lot of work to put together, 
on its own, and I don't want to take away from that. But just if you're going to make this an interesting dungeon that I think a lot of players are going to want to play, and not just at least my players will probably get a little bored by this sort of combat after combat after combat, especially in a game like Shadow Dark, um, where you, it seems to me that combat is something you're trying to maybe do not as much of, right? You're trying to be clever in your approach to things. There is an NPC here that you can run into. And one of the things that's interesting about this is that there are several places where it connects to other adventures. Actually, one of them is Khazad Moor that it connects to. And then two of them that it connects to later are by Source of Victory, which I've reviewed earlier in another video. Um, so it does connect, and that's kind of cool. You have, you have ways of connecting to other adventures throughout here. Um, the Deeper Caves of Bruin. I'm just going to click flip through this a little bit more quickly at this point. Now, as you go down, it does get more interesting in a lot of ways. Here's the ab Apsidal Orb, which is a way of teleporting out and back to wherever it's locked to. Then there are Grimlock ambushes where you're going to be attacked. Yeah, in this cavern, the Grimlocks uh, leap on non-Grimlocks and stab them to death. There's an Aboleth down here, which is uh, pretty pretty terrifying, pretty strong. You've got to be careful with Aboleths. There's a, a White here, Glazer. Glazer attacks to kill unless the crawlers present a very compelling argument. And there's some cool descriptions of the regions here um, with some interesting magic items and stuff going on. There's the Atiug, which you got to fight. Worshipped by cave denizens, dwells under the pond. Um, then there's the Shrine of the Golden Jaguar. If you go through the d distant tunnel for miles, you find your way there. There is a Grimlock Lair, and then you get the Temple of Bloat, which is level 4 to 6. There are some doors that you have to communicate with telepathically. Kind of interesting. And then there's the big bad, I think he's sort of the big bad, Ipsil the Defiler. I mean, in a way he's the big bad, because it's not the deepest of the dungeons. And this is where at the very end you can kind of inter interact with Scree, the two-headed Grimlock Ogre. Um, so the Pits of Brund, I think there are certain tables who are going to love this, I think there are certain tables who are going to love Khazad more, and there are certain tables who are going to love the Crow's Cage. So, you know, do what you think you're, you know, if you're a DM and you're thinking about getting one of these, um, do what you think your table would enjoy because I think uh, any of them are going to fit. And I, anyone could have fun. I think every, you know, you could have fun with any of these. Any table could have fun with any of these. Um, if I had to pick one to recommend, it would be Khazad more. But I think all three are interesting adventures, and uh, I'll put links below to where you can get them. Anyway, hope this has been interesting, and I'll talk to you guys in another video.